This conference will now be recorded. Hi, good evening. This is uh, Ajit Gokhale with AI Engineers, uh, along with Alison Kapushinsky, the town engineer for town of Wallingford. Uh, we are presenting the proposed project, Tolly's Road uh, Bridge over Quinnipiac River. Uh, we want to give a, a briefing and an overview of this upcoming project that is currently in design. Uh, so I want to uh, go through it. Uh, Alison, do you want to formally introduce yourself or your sure. good what's on the screen? Sure, Alison Kapuscinski, town engineer in Wallingford. And I am Ajit Gokhale, project manager with AI Engineers. I'll be managing this project with my design team at AI, working for the town. And uh, with, without further ado, I'll just get into the today's meeting uh, or public information ag agenda, uh, an overview of what we are presenting. Uh, so I am going to talk about uh, existing conditions of the bridge uh, and then why this bridge came about for uh, rehabilitation and or superstructure replacement. Then I'll speak about, uh, give a brief uh, about the project funding, uh, what the proposed design will entail, uh, any rights of way impacts, utility impacts. We'll talk about construction cost and schedule, and there'll be a, a project rendering so uh, uh, people can see what the finished project will look like. Uh, and then we will take some questions uh, at the end of, of the presentation. Uh, and also the questions can be called in to Allison's office. So we have the contact details at the end of the presentation for that. So um, what you see on the screen is a brief outline of what I just mentioned of what the presentation will entail. Uh, a big picture where the project is located. Uh, most people in town probably know this bridge, but I'll just uh, give an overview of where it is. This is Tolis Road going east-west uh, towards Route 15. His Route 15 will cross Parkway. Tolis Road passes underneath that bridge and then uh, joins Hartford Turnpike. The bridge that we are talking about is located right where the arrow shows, right over Quinnipiac River. It is just about 40, 50 feet uh, east of Route 15. So you'll see a better picture of the bridge in the next slide. Uh, so the red rectangle is where the bridge is. That's that's the footprint of the bridge. Here's Stoli's Road. This is a slide that shows the various town lines. You know, Wallingford town line is, as you see here, as, as I'm moving the cursor alongside, Hamden is over here, and then this portion is again North Haven. So there are three towns kind of coming together at this general location. Uh, so this bridge was inspected, the bridges get inspected every two years, and the last inspection on this bridge was done in 2019 uh, by AI engineers. Uh, before that, I believe 2017 and 2015, so uh, biennial inspections are done on uh, bridges like this. And uh, we found uh, the bridges are rated on a scale of 1 to 10. Different structural elements are rated. Uh, you know, anything 4 and greater is, you know, either satisfactory or in good condition, 6, 7, that way. And then anything 4 is considered poor. Uh, rating just to give you a, a general idea of the rating scale and anything four or less uh, three is serious condition so in certain cases we may have to close the bridge so there is this bridge is not in serious condition but it is in poor condition this the superstructure is in poor condition and needs to be um, replaced um, so th this is an overview of the ratings this is the concrete deck uh, which is in satisfactory condition so um, in theory that could remain but the superstructure is in poor condition and and we also did a load rating of this uh, which is calculating the capacity of the bridge to carry current live loads or the current design live loads 
and it is insufficient to carry current design live loads. It was designed for a, a you know an older set of loads, uh, so that's really what it means. It's not like it cannot carry vehicles. It can, but it cannot carry certain uh, notional loading that is used in design. The substructure is in good condition. So um, just an overview of of the dimensions of the bridge. The span of the bridge is 113 feet. Out to out is, I think, 115 feet longitudinally in the east-west direction. Uh, and the width of the bridge is from curb to curb is about 32 feet. Out to out width is 36 feet. Uh, the 100-year flood, you know, passes underneath the bridge with about 1.4 feet of clearance. So that is a good thing. And we are not looking to change that. That will still remain uh, in, the, in the proposed condition. Uh, approaches, the width of the approach roadways is adequate. It meets the current requirement. It's 32 feet. So ideally what you want is the curb to curb width of the bridge as well as the approach width to be the same. And in this case it is, so there is no reason to change that. Uh, the sufficiency rating uh, of the bridge is basically, it's, it's a it's a weighted formula. You know, it looks at different elements of the bridge, like the structural adequacy of the bridge, the serviceability of the bridge, the essentiality of the bridge, and if there are any special reductions on the bridge. So it is all these four or five four elements are rated on a uh, rated on a weighted scale, and then you come up with a ratio or a, or a number, which is called a sufficiency rating. So what that indicates is anything 50 or greater. You know, the bridge is generally sufficient, uh, if you were to use layman's terms. Anything that is 50 or less, you know, usually needs to be replaced uh, in full. Uh, but there are other criteria, other, other conditions on the bridge that can also dictate a replacement of certain parts of the bridge, even though the sufficiency rating may be greater than 50. So that's kind of what you have here. Uh, and the average daily traffic on this bridge is 8,400 vehicles per day. And it is predicted uh, to go up to like 12,000, so which is a decent amount of volume for this this type of road. Uh, so that's something that may come into play in the future. Uh, but right now we are dealing with about 8,400 or 9,000 vehicles per day. Um, before before I talk about the proposed uh, uh, bridge or you know what the existing conditions show. I want to describe a little bit of how this bridge is actually constructed. So the, the existing bridge, as you can see in this view here, this is a view looking east, has two main girders that are alongside this parapet here. You know, the girders span east to west on both sides. So there are two main girders uh, that that project above the deck. You know, the total depth of the girders is over six and a half feet. Some portion of that girder also projects underneath the deck. The parapets are poured right against these existing girders. And the way this bridge is held together is these two main girders carry all the load and there are cross members that run between the two girders that you don't see under, that you'll see in the another picture, um, but they're underneath the deck. So it's basically a system of Two long girders along east-west and transfers beams that span between the two main girders underneath the deck, and that supports the whole structure. That's how this is. This bridge was built, and there was a reason why they did that is because that allows you to to limit the depth of the structure underneath the deck, so that the under-year water surf water uh, discharge can pass without any obstruction underneath the bridge. So most of the depth of the beam is above the deck. You know, if, uh, I don't want to get too technical, but that's that's uh, a requirement for this, this site. Um, and that's how it was done. This existing bridge that you see there was constructed around 1982. So with that in mind, uh, you know, we have two views um, of the approaches here going to the bridge. This is the approach going towards the bridge, towards the west. Here's Route 15 or Wilbur Cross Parkway, as you see in the background. And this is the approach going 
towards the east coming from South Turnpike and along the curve underneath the bridge. Um, now there's some existing conditions um, that I want to talk about. These are the two main girders that I mentioned. This is only a portion of it, but what uh, what cause what is causing the the need for replacement of the superstructure is the condition of the existing main girders that span east west that are the main load carrying members. Um, during the inspection, we've noticed a, a severe section loss and scaling and back rust along several spots along these girders. And um, you know you can see a portion of these girders between floor beams we've identified which floor beams they are located between this is between beams three and four so these floor beams are the transfers beams that i was talking about there's some other pictures uh, of the main girder again you see rust along the web you know uh, some efflorescence which is salt leaking through and then there is continuous corrosion going on along these flanges so uh, one may ask, why can't we repair this bridge? And we looked at that option as well. But being that it's a two girder system, um, to repair this bridge, you will have to take the entire deck out and expose these members. And then some of these repairs can get very complicated in terms of adding plates, you know, removing the uh, the existing rust by sandblasting. And even before you do that, you will need a containment system underneath so that none of the debris can fall through and uh, you can catch the debris without polluting the water underneath. So if you look at the cost of all that, it will easily come to more than 50% of the cost of replacing the superstructure of this bridge. So all that was vetted out um, you know, during the earlier phases of the project need and uh, we came to a conclusion that it's in the town's interest and everybody's best interest to replace the superstructure of the bridge. So it's like money well spent, and then you get a bang for your buck as well. Uh, down the, you know, you'll increase the service life of the superstructure to 50 years or 50 to 75 years with this new structure. Whereas if you were to repair it, um, you would spend. Uh, a lot of funds and then at the same time you will not get a brand new structure but you will get something like a band-aid which will give you about 20 years of life but again you'll be back there uh, repairing this bridge few years down the road so that is why we are replacing the superstructure of this bridge and i'll explain what that entails and what that new structure is going to look like in, in, down as we go down the presentation i also want to touch base on uh, there are some other other aspects of this bridge that are obsolete, which is one of them being the bearings on the existing, which are underneath the existing girders. So the east-west girders that I talked about, which are the main carrying beams, are supported on on bearings. Uh, the one on the right of your screen, where I'm pointing to, that's an expansion bearing, or commonly called as a rocker bearing. This is an obsolete system. It was in practice for many years. This is not used anymore because uh, over time they lean and you know they malfunction and they lock in place and they don't they don't serve a function uh, continuously as as they were designed to do uh, and that's only because of you know wear and tear and you know basically uh, rust building up and you know dirt collecting and they jam up so. Uh, these bearings will be replaced with with new type of bearings which are elastomeric bearings underneath the new structure on the left what you see is uh, the other end which is the west abutment uh, i'm sorry this is the east abutment and this is the west abutment on the east side you have a fixed bearing so you have this anchor bolt uh, and and a bronze plate so this is another type of bearing that is also obsolete and not used anymore and and more so in this case, they are deteriorated. It's not worth replacing just the bearings and, and trying to uh, you know salvage anything here. So uh, it's in the town's best interest to, to replace what's there. Uh, now you saw the pictures of the, uh, of the rust and the corroded portions of the, of the girders. And one of the reasons that has been going on over time is that 
the the parapets were poured right against the the main girders as you can see in this close up photo and what has happened is over time water has penetrated through this gap between the the steel web of the girder and and the back of this parapet and and it has been leaking through this gap over time we don't know for how many years but that's been going on and then that whole leakage has caused this corrosion that I showed you in, in the picture earlier. So this water leaks through from behind the parapets and, and it gets onto the steel. And if that keeps on happening, um, you're pretty much going to get, uh, you know, progressive corrosion on these girders, which is not what you want. And that reduces the section of the beam and eventually reduces the load carrying capacity of the beam. So uh, this, this needs to be attended to uh, as without delaying too much. Uh, so the next picture is just a general view of the river looking north as if standing from the bridge and looking south. That's the Quinnipiac River. This, that's what the bridge spans over. The picture was taken in winter. As you can see, there's no vegetation. Uh, there's no, no leaves there. If you go out there right now, there's plenty of vegetation and trees that you will see. Yeah. This is the condition of the bridge underneath. So these are the floor beams of the transverse members that span between these main carrying members. Uh, this is a picture of the abutment looking west. This is the west abutment. There is, during the original construction of the bridge, there was some intermediate riprap that was placed along the west abutment as cover protection. Some of it is uh, out of position, some of it has got washed away, but most of it is there. So as part of this project, we'll be restoring that so that you know we don't have any scour issues or undermining of the abutment that is meant to protect the, the abutments against scour. Uh, on the on the right hand side, you pick you see a picture of the east abutment, where this, you see riprap, which is covered with sediments. Uh, most of it is is intact, but again, as part of this project, we'll restore it back to what it was uh, originally designed designed for. It's not a huge problem or anything, but as part of the superstructure replacement project, it's only um, correct to to you know restore it back to what what it was. A little bit of history of this bridge. This bridge is not a historic structure per se, but uh, doing a little bit of research, we found that uh, the original bridge was a truss bridge and built in 1898 initially, fabricated by Berlin Iron Bridge Company, which is close to Wallingford. And then uh, that bridge apparently remained until 1980 or so, and it was rehabbed a few times. 19, in 1968, 1970, but eventually it became old. And then the DOT designed a replacement bridge in about 1980 or so. And it was, the design was completed in 81 and the construction was, I think, done around the same time, around 1982. So what you see today at, at you know, on Tolis Road is the existing bridge that was built in 1982. Uh, the old historic bridge was removed before that or non-historic bridge, I should say. Um, so we kept that in mind as a theme, and this is a this is a proposed project plan. I just want to give you the limits of our project. Uh, so our project entails the the orange or the brown uh, footprint that you see here is the is the new superstructure that we are going to uh, construct, design and construct. And then the yellow portion is basically the reconstruction of the approaches about 200 feet on the east side and a very short stretch uh, about 30 40 feet on on the west side uh, before you hit 15 the, you don't see 15 in this picture but it's right right around here you know uh, so this is just showing the dark blue is the the quinnipiac river the, the river flows from north to south that being the downstream side, this being the upstream side. Uh, the light blue is the wetlands in the area that have all been located by survey and you know proper methods of flagging 
uh, by a wetland scientist. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, so in order to replace this superstructure, uh, we looked at maintaining traffic on the bridge during construction, but given that there is a curve, um, you know, that comes in from South Turnpike, you know, and, and then goes further east on a straight line alignment, maintaining traffic on one lane of traffic on this bridge will be very problematic because there are issues with side distance as you come along the curve and it will be very hard to to maintain one way alternating traffic and get people across and there's considerable amount of volume during peak hours here that can create some serious backup so that was one of the reasons and the other bigger reason is that to maintain only half of the deck uh, on a two girder structure like this during construction is not feasible from a structural point of view because it creates some unbalanced loading on the bridge uh, and that coupled with the, the side distance and the geometry it was just not feasible to to maintain traffic on the bridge during during the superstructure replacement construction so this was discussed and you know uh, the best uh, option for this site was to use a local detour and divert traffic along a detour route which is shown highlighted here in green uh, and what that entails is um, you know during construction Tolly's road in this stretch would be closed and traffic will be detoured along South Turnpike Road along Quinnipiac Street Ward Street and along Route 5 uh, back so that you can get back on Tolly's Road and then go towards 91. So any traffic coming from from the uh, from further you know from further west would have to use this detour. I've driven the detour myself. It's it's very doable. It's about close to five miles. I show 4.63 miles here, which is an approximate measurement from Google Maps. But uh, you know, give or take, it's about five miles. And it took me, you know, even during peak hours, it took me not less less than 10 minutes to travel this road, say about 10 minutes to go around this loop uh, and, you know, go back to 91, if, if that's where most of the traffic seems to be going around five o'clock. Uh, and the, the way the we looked at three D2 routes, this was, a, this was one of the three that was selected by the town, uh, you know, so it was vetted out, there is a, checklist for checking the feasibility of the D2 that we, we use. Uh, it's a DOT prescribed checklist. And if uh, a selected route meets all those or most of the boxes on the checklist, it's determined to be a feasible D2 route. So a quick checklist was uh, you know um, checked uh, before we uh, proposed the D2 route. And this was the most feasible D2 route that I think the uh, has been reviewed by the town's emergency uh, and the police. And uh, Alison, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that has been vetted out at your end, correct? Uh, so going further, um, this is just an enlarged view of the of the proposed footprint of the bridge. So the span of the bridge is going to be the same as the existing. It's going to be 113 feet, center line to center line of bearings, out to out. Um, is about 115 feet and again the yellow shows a little bit of the footprint of, of the proposed pavement. There will possibly be new approach slabs. Uh, we are looking at that um, that will be uh, uh, you know constructed at each end of the bridge. So what does the proposed bridge or what will the proposed bridge look like? So this is this is the bridge elevation you know uh, this is just shown mostly schematically right now. The truss is being designed, but it it shows you, uh, you know, what the overall truss will look like. So we are going to replace those east-west girders and and the floor beams and the deck with a two truss structure. The trusses will be galvanized um, steel, uh, so they'll look sort of silver or the galvanized gray color. Then there will be a three tube rail, which I'll show you in the next picture or next slide, which is the current 
uh, standard for uh, bridges if you want an open railing system. We wanted to avoid any kind of concrete parapet so that we don't repeat the same, uh, you know, sort of the error uh, that some somehow exists on, on the existing bridge. We want improvement. So the open railing system uh, gives a little open look as well as it also meets the current TL2 requirement or a TL3 requirement, depending on how it's designed. Is a three tube uh, mounted bridge railing system. Uh, and you know the low chord elevation as we call it, the, which is the lowest point on the superstructure, that will be the same as the existing bridge or a little bit uh, of an improvement, it might be bettered. So the 100 year storm will still pass underneath the bridge with the required, you know, at least with 1.4 or 1.5 feet of clearance. Ideal clearance you want is two feet, DOT requires two feet, but uh, that's, if you don't meet it, it's not the end of the world. What you what you want is is uh, is what we call the under clearance, or uh, some states refer to it as a freeboard. Freeboard is defined a little bit differently in Connecticut. It is, uh, but this is the under clearance. So the clear distance from the lowest point on on the structure to to the water the highest water surface elevation. And that's in a nutshell that would be the definition of under clearance. So we'll have 1.4 or 1.5 feet when the bridge is completed. Um, in in cross section, what you see on the view above is in gray is what the existing cross section looks like. These are the two main girders. This is the parapet that was poured against the main girders. These are the floor beams and then the deck is on top with an overlay. The new cross section or the proposed cross section, you will see the trusses. The trusses will be about, you know, 11 to 12 feet high, and you know you'll have an open railing on the bridge, and a new deck that will be spanning between the floor beams. We'll be using stain place forms, which are basically forms that you don't need to remove after the deck is poured, so you don't have a need to go underneath the bridge and then try to remove them during construction. So, so that saves a lot of time, uh, you know, when you are into construction, you, you pour the deck and you basically walk, walk away. Uh, so that's the proposed um, section. Uh, one thing to note is we are not changing the width of the bridge. The out-to-out -out width will remain about the same, 36 feet. The curb-to-curb -curb width will be maintained, 32 feet, so you'll have two 12, 12 feet lanes and a four feet shoulder. Uh, so that will be maintained. Uh, so there is no need to, to change that because what's there is adequate. Uh, another thing to note here is that the existing bridge supports a gas line. So that gas line will be temporarily relocated during construction. And I'll talk about that when we get to the utilities. Uh, and then it will go back onto the permanent bridge as it stands today. So the gas company is Eversource Gas. They are on board with with this idea, and they'll be uh, we'll be working with them throughout the process and throughout the construction to to so that there is no obstacles and and the service of the gas line is maintained throughout construction. So there won't be any uh, you know closure of the service other than a very short uh, you know uh, closure of of the service, and that can be worked worked out with the gas company during uh, relocation. A brief uh, overview of the right of way lines um, and what the impacts to properties will be. So what's highlighted here in yellow is the existing right of way lines. This this line here shows you the what is commonly termed as a street line or the town's right of way. And then there is a easement that the town has for the existing water line. There's a water line that goes underneath, under underground, and then it goes under underneath the Quinnipiac River. So there's an easement, existing easement for that. That will remain unchanged. The line here is the right-of-way line for the for Route 15. That is the Connecticut DOT's right-of-way. So it's on both sides of Route 15. I don't show the other side because it, it goes beyond the picture. It's probably a good good amount of right of way, like 100, 200 uh, feet of DOT right of way here. 
we won't be impacting any of that we'll be basically working with what's available there'll be some temporary impacts on suzio's property um, that you see on the south east corner here we are going to build an access road uh, but that's only for temporary construction some of the trees will be removed and we'll work with the property owner and the town to explain to them those impacts but they'll be only temporary so there won't be any permanent takes or you know acquisitions um, required for that it's only temporary impacts because we are basically restoring replacing the uh, footprint of the structure with a new footprint so we are not creating any new impacts with with the with the new structure so that's why i i just wanted to bring this up you know and just show the public that we'll be maintaining what's what's there in terms of right of way impact any impacts will be temporary and that those will be discussed with the individual property owners and and with the town and we'll get concurrence on those before we move to the next design stage um, i just want to touch base on the utility impact so there is an existing gas line like i mentioned before that is attached to the the southern girder the southern main girder as you can see in this picture it's owned by eversource gas it's about it's an eight inch diameter gas line and it goes underground at each end of the bridge and then it goes further uh, west after route 15. there are aerial lines as you can see in this picture on the north side of the bridge on on uh, poles owned by eversource as well we won't be impacting these uh, so we are not going to move any poles or relocate any poles our construction sequence is going to be such that we do everything from the south and the south uh, east and southwest side um, and you know erect all the structure from the south side so that's why that access road will be required on the southeast corner uh, so that we don't impact any of these aerial ut utilities on the north side this is just another picture of the utilities as you can see they are parallel to the to the bridge and then the, then they go over route 15 they go above route 15. Uh, so there won't be any major utility impacts other than uh, relocating this gas line for the south about 20 feet to the south during construction so that we clear create a clear window uh, with the with the gas line away from the construction so that we can remove the old structure and install the new structure and then after that is done the gas line goes back into uh, you know attached to the to the new bridge again so there's no change to that a brief overview of the construction cost and the project funding uh, the overall construction cost is going to be 2.9 million uh, uh, application for that has been submitted to the to the town and to the prog agencies and it's being reviewed uh, the bridge structure we estimate uh, along with um, you know the that includes the replacement structure uh, the trusses so about 2.1 million and some minor uh, repairs and and adjustments that we'll have to make to the abutments to accommodate the new structure uh, there'll be some roadway reconstruction at each end. Uh, the yellow footprint that I pointed to earlier in the slide, we estimate that to be about half half a million dollars with uh, some improvements to the guide railing that exists today. We'll bring it up to current standards. Uh, contingencies and incidentals uh, are 10% each. So uh, that's about $250,000 is what we estimate. Now, now the design of this project is completely funded by the town, town of Wallingford, and the construction funds will come through from lotship funds, which are basically federal funds through the state, uh, through the local transportation capital improvement program. So there is a whole process for securing this funding that we are going through right now through the town, and we hope that that will be in place by the time we are ready to construct this bridge. Uh, so that's the that's the funding that has been uh, applied for project schedule an overview of the schedule 
So currently we are in, in design. We are about, about 40% complete in design. And after the public information phase, which we are in right now, after we get everybody's comments and input, and we'll you know, technically have a design approval, and then we'll proceed to final design. We intend to complete the final design by September of this year or possibly earlier and get this job out for advertising uh, around October of 2021. And then there is about a minimum 21 days period. Uh, so for all practical purposes, we are counting about a month of advertising and then open bids around November. Uh, and we'll accelerate the award you know, within the next month in December. And, and we are looking at start of construction in April of 2022, um, you know, uh, by implementing the detour that happens first at the beginning of the construction and end construction by September. So it's about six to eight months. Eight months is pushing it, but we, we intend to complete this job. What we typically call one season is, you know, eight months. So it's six to eight months in this case. Uh, and I list the gas line relocation because that's something that can be done before the actual start of construction so that the gas line is out of the way. And when we get a contractor to begin construction, they don't have to deal with the gas line. They can straight away start their activities in, in the month of April. Uh, so Eversource and us and the town are in, in discussions right now uh, to get that plan in place. And as we move into final design, we will have a solid plan in place to get uh, the gas line relocated uh, before the actual, you know, all the action in construction starts in April of 2022. Um, so that's the overview. And, you know, obviously the detour will be in place uh, just before April. I do show April 2022 implement the detour. It will be in place for at least six months. And when we are ready to open the bridge, we'll remove the detour. So this is a somewhat of a conservative estimate. So we could possibly end construction in September and open the bridge around that time. You know, sometimes the paving is done, uh, you know, between September and October because around November the paving plants close. So you want to get all the paving done uh, ideally before November, you know, September or October as soon as the bridge gets completed and then you are ready to open the bridge. Uh, we have some renderings of how, what the new bridge will look like. On the left, si left side, you see the picture of the two trusses. These are galvanized. Of course, this is not the actual picture. This is a, a rendering, a computer rendering. Uh, and I have a short video of like a walkthrough of what the bridge will look like when it's done. Uh, on the right hand side is a view of the bridge as if seen from the river you know these are the two trusses so you the the two girders will be gone and you'll see trusses in their place with a new deck a more open type structure which is uh, it's subjective but that's more pleasing to the eye compared to what you have today and on the left side again this is a picture as if seen standing on route 15 and looking down on the bridge looking towards the east uh, with that said i just want to play a short sort of a rendering or video of or like a walkthrough of what the bridge would look like when it's done and what it will feel like when you're driving over it. So here you'll see a short video of it. So you are now approaching the bridge, traveling towards the west. Here are the two trusses and the railing. And then you're going towards Route 15. I'll, I'll play it again and I can pause it as we go on the bridge. So here you're approaching the bridge. And then you're on the bridge. You see the two trusses galvanized steel. There'll be the open railing system. The width of the bridge will be maintained. And it'll give you a more open feeling as you're going through traveling towards the west. So that is our proposed uh, design. And this is a bridge on Route 15. This is a computer rendering, so it's not super accurate. but uh, just to give you a, an overall idea of what the finished product will look like. Uh, with that, 
we get into the, the questions portion of uh, of the presentation. And again, Alison and I both are available to take questions uh, at this time. Whatever we can answer, we'll answer. And uh, any other questions that are more detailed, we'll, we'll take them and then we'll get back to, to whoever has asked the question or to the general public until June 16th of, uh, the questions will be open until June 16th of 2021. So you can send in your questions or call in your questions. Alison, any, any comments? I do not have any comments. Thank you, Ajit. That was a great overview of the project. Um, does anybody have any questions at this time? I think we only have one caller or, or one person logged in. Okay. Any questions from you, sir or madam, who's logged in? Logged in? All right, sounds like there are no questions. Just once again, if anybody watching this recording has any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me at the engineering department, 203-294-2035. Um, I'll be happy to take your questions, um, you know, really anytime, but especially until June 16th, at which point Ajit and I will review any questions or comments and uh, go forward with the design. So thank you for attending and thank you, Ajit. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alison. Thank you very much. Thank you, whoever attended. Thanks for your patience. And we look forward to working with the town on this challenging project. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. You too, Alison. Thank you.